Good morning. This is a bird feeder slash birdhouse restoration that I did for a friend of mine. If you'd like to see how I did it, how I built it, stick around. I have another restoration project here. It's a uh, it's a birdhouse, a bird feeder, and what I'm going to do is, it has sentimental value, so I'm going to try to put it, put it back together. I'll take it apart, and I'll put it back together, and save as many of the, of the old parts as possible. First thing I'm going to do is I'll take it apart, and try to figure out the scope of the uh, repairs I need to make. Well, one of the things I can... Uh say already is the birdhouse was built with drywall drywall screws and of course that's a non-starter but also I think mo most of the water damage and the thing has been completely destroyed by water is caused because this roof leaks so whatever plan I come up with, it's going to have to be a, a plan to seal this roof to keep the water off the bird feeding area, which is underneath those pedestals. Now this thing was put together, these side uh, eaves here were nailed into this stack, this feeding stack, or screwed into it with a long screw. Well, that made this center stack uh, uh, unstable. But it also ended up breaking both of these, both of the eaves. What we have here is the central feeding tube. Now for this to work, it's the whole birdhouse is built around this. And for this to work, these wide boards need to be identical and these narrow boards need how to be identical. How it works, uh, how they were doing it, is that goes there. And the that other goes wide there. board goes on top. Well, if these aren't the same width and the same you know, if, if everything isn't correct about them, then this thing won't be square, and then the whole birdhouse will be out of whack. And that's one of the things I discovered when I took it about part, is that this thing was racked, uh, which meant the whole birdhouse was racked. Okay, let me glue this thing up and uh, keep moving along. I don't know what this is called, but use it all the time in boat building. Take some uh, epoxy, mix it with sawdust. There it is, the, uh, the box is all the screw holes and all the defects and cracks are all filled with uh, epoxy. This is the central feeding tube and this is the size of the feeding area right here and down here at the bottom is the base uh, for the whole bird feeder. Um, these are, are two slabs of wood that I've joined together and now I'm going to join these two slabs of wood together using epoxy. 
I think you'd be interested in seeing how I stick these together. So what I got here is these are the two uh, slabs for the base. I'm going to laminate them together using epoxy and then I'm going to set this vise on top of the whole thing uh, to press them together. Hey, here goes nothing. See, I'm putting these cross grain for strength. I don't want to use plywood for the base. Oh, it looks like it's going to put the end good. This MDF down. Going to spread the weight. Okay. Well, there you have it. Well, the base is dry. Uh, the epoxy is cured. While that was curing, I uh, went ahead and replaced all the broken and uh, rotten parts. I replaced all the plywood. This was the old plywood bottom right here. It had, uh, see it had deteriorated and swollen part. Um, I added new solid braces up here that go all the way from the outer wall all the way to the uh, food chamber. I also added an overhang here to keep water from dripping into the uh, seed trough. And, of course, now everything is, uh, you know, falling together. So the reason I made such a big deal about laminating two pieces of wood together so that this thing would be an inch and a half thick is because I'm going to take my and angle I'm grinder, to cut an angle, a smooth angle, from the base of the food trough all the way down to this second board so that all the water that runs off the feeder will run onto this deck and then off. It won't fall onto a flat surface and then migrate into the center. epoxy. This time I'm coating the entire base with it to make it more, I won't say waterproof, but it'll uh, definitely be more water resistant. I got the tower stained. I'm going to stain the whole thing uh, using a color called uh, Gunstock. By rights, this project should be painted, but the original wasn't painted, so I'm going to uh, honor, that, uh, honor that condition. Doing a little staining, what I'll do is I'll finish the Finish the staining, let it dry a little bit, put it together, and start thinking about putting the roof on it.
here you can see the concept of the whole thing. Um, got the central feeding tube uh, going down through the center and then the whole bird feeder is connected to that. Um, so the thing now is completely solid. It's got an oak deck here and um, it's all together. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to coat the entire thing with this stuff called spar varnish. Uh, this is uh, usually used in uh, marine applications. It takes a long time to dry, but it's very it's very uh, resistant to the elements. Um, it protects against the wood and rain and everything else. So I'm going to coat it even on the inside with this uh, spar varnish. Since the old uh, uh, the old version of this uh, failed primarily because the roof was leaking badly, um, I'm not taking any chances. I'm uh, first thing I've, I've done is. You know, I put these solid blocks of wood in here, so there's uh, no no chance of water getting in there. And then I'm covering uh, the entire thing, uh, the roof surface, with a sheet of plastic. And then over the plastic, I will install the new shingles which will look like that. So uh, water will be blocked uh, not only by the uh, properly installed shingles, uh, but also this piece of plastic. Well, I got one side done. Let's take a look at it and see how, it, see how it kind of flares, flares at the bottom. Those are real, that's real cedar right there. I made my own, I made my own uh, roofing material out of cedar. No nails showing. Right here, I put a little drip edge to drain water away from that stack. And then, on the very top, if I can find it, at the very top, I'll be putting this. Uh, this kind of material here. It's a, a corner, some corner trim that works perfectly as a ridge cap for the uh, I got all the roof, the roof shingles on. Um, all the ridge caps. And I built this uh, new topper. It's uh, the lid it's eight inches uh, square. It's covered, the top is covered with epoxy and then uh, over that I put uh, shellac. Um, if, it's, if, if the epoxy is uh, sanded, the shellac will stick fine. You got to put shellac over epoxy uh, because epoxy is degraded by the sun. Uh, so you need to put uh, shellac over it for UV protection. Uh, the old, let me show you the old. This was the old top. Uh, it, it was made just to fit the top. 
band. Then it was uh, held and it had a little screen door hinge right up there. And the theory is then you just uh, flop it back and you know then it would it would be spring loaded. Well the problem is of course that this little screen door hinge failed and this top is not large enough um, and it's you know still let water in and of course the board failed. So this new lid has no no moving parts. You can just grab it, take it off, and should be secure. Well, that's it for another edition of uh, Memphis Morning. I hope you enjoyed the uh, restoration of this old uh, birdhouse slash bird feeder. It's real uh, cedar shingles on the roof. It's watertight. Feeding uh, tube is watertight. The the green deck here uh, uh, is coated with epoxy and beveled to allow rainwater to drain off. Uh, it's solid and I reused probably 75% uh, of the parts. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, please uh, comment. I enjoy your comments and uh, I try to respond. So get excited for the next project.